What are some life-saving tips you think people need to know, and in what situation would they be used? When walking in Big Five territory, if you encounter lions, don't run. If they come towards you, growling, it's to say you are too close, but they will not attack you. Just walk away slowly and don't lose sight of them. Or stand your ground. Intelligence is your biggest weapon then, shout and clap your hands, and they will run away. Source, M. Kruger Wildlife Guide, with more than 10 encounters with wild lions in the last year. Seriously, don't run. If you're being tied up, puff yourself out as much as possible so it'll be easier to wiggle out of. Tense muscles, inhale deep and stretch out your arms and legs to make more space. That's what horses do to get a looser saddle strap on their belly. If you're performing CPR on someone who stopped breathing hard has stopped, don't stop until EMTs take the body away. Don't stop after two minutes thinking well that didn't work. CPR typically won't cause the victim's heart to suddenly start and or for them to jerk awake it's mostly to force blood circulation to prevent brain death. You're not forcing life into them, you're preserving a corpse to keep a revivable state. Medics did CPR on my brother for over 30 minutes. When I heard that, as I was rushing to the hospital, I was devastated, and I knew that he was probably brain damaged. Well, a few weeks later he walked out of the hospital as normal as ever. Well, normal for him. When he woke up, he asked what happened, and when we said that his friend started CPR, he joked Iwu did he use his tongue too. Yup. That's when we knew he would be okay. So, that is correct. Don't stop until the medics take over. They can determine when to stop. Tips for cold weather. Dress in layers holds heat in better. Stay dry. Protect your feet, hands, and face. If you plan on going long distances have a plan to move on top of the snow and let people know where you are going never go on ice unless it is at least 4 thick. 6 if you have a snowmobile. 8 for a small car. 12 for medium trucks. Clear ice is stronger than snow ice always watch for signs of frostbite and hypothermia. Protecting your feet keeping them dry is huge in any survival situation. If a service dog comes to you for attention, immediately locate their owner, they could be using a last-ditch effort to get help. A few months ago when I was on a delivery for work, I was stopped by a dog who ran out in the middle of the road, residential. I got out and tried to move the dog, but it followed me all the way to the door of my delivery. Once I was done I checked the dog's tag to bring it home, and I noticed he had all kinds of medical tags. After I realized what the dog was trying to do, I ran towards the correct address and the dog led me through a screen door on the porch. His owner was passed out on the floor, and I called 911. The individual had a phone, brought by the dog, by its head, and a bag of medications by his side. The dog had done everything it was trained to do, but the person had passed out before it could do anything. The ambulance came, got his pulse back, and took him to the hospital. I don't know if he ended up surviving. But if I hadn't checked the dog's tags and realized it was a medical animal, I wouldn't have hurried, blatantly invite myself in his house, and ultimately get him to a point of survival. A person who is drowning doesn't look like people drowning on TV. When someone is drowning they rarely cry out, can't wave their arms around, and will often just bob sink at the surface for a very little while, often gasping, before submerging. Don't expect it to look like the movies when you're keeping an eye on swimmers. Edit, thanks to those who have posted links in the comments to additional videos showing people how to spot drownings, I did my training many years ago and didn't think to look online for videos, and to you Kagi Bayliss who has been addressing a lot of follow-up questions information while I was asleep. In the US, and I think some other Western countries, you can notify your Department of State that you are going overseas for free, I think it is the Smart Traveler program. This means in event of a natural disaster political issue etc., they will know you need evacuation. They also update you on the state of the country as time goes by so you don't accidentally collide with some trouble. A lot of accidents happen just by being in the wrong place at the wrong time, so if you're traveling, it might be worth looking into.
Also, embassies' consuls have emergency numbers they answer 24 hours a day. Save, on your phone, this phone number of your nearest embassy consul when abroad. If you get in many kinds of trouble, with the police, other legal issues, medical stuff, if you're a victim of a crime, lost your passport, etc., they can help you much more effectively than your family friends back home can. Do not pull objects, knife, glass, splinter etc. from a deep wound. They might be sealing or slowing flow from an artery, or they might cut an artery when you pull them out. Put pressure around such an object to slow bleeding till emergency responders take over. If it's in someone's I don't pull it out. Wrap it to secure if possible. Cover both eyes to minimalize them trying to look around and cause damage. If someone is choking but they are coughing talking, do not intervene. Let them cough it out. The ability to cough is a sign that air is able to get in and out, and that they only have a partial obstruction in their airway. If you try to intervene with the Heimlich or back blows, you could force it out, or you could dislodge the blockage and cause a full obstruction. Obviously, if they're not breathing or coughing then you should definitely administer back blows, just remember to check in between each one in case you partially dislodge the object.